a compact, rugged, self-contained industrial power meter for high-power laser measurement. That's the new Ophir Ariel. It measures beam powers up to 8 kilowatts, with wavelengths in several spectral regions, by a short exposure to the beam. The whole measurement is done within seconds, fast enough that the total amount of heat actually absorbed by the instrument is small. No need for water cooling. The small device can fit into tight spaces, such as additive manufacturing chambers, and the wireless Bluetooth interface means you can even close the door of the chamber. You don't need to worry about process debris inside the chamber. The Ariel's industrial design means it's dust and splash resistant. You can operate the Ariel wirelessly using your Android phone or tablet, standalone using the built-in display screen, or via a USB connection to a PC. Let's take a look. Here we see the Ariel's front panel with its display screen and dynamic soft key controls. Here on the bottom is a positioning hole and mounting holes for attaching an optional heatsink. We'll come back to that heatsink shortly. The USB connector is for interfacing with a PC or laptop. Ophir's StarLab laser measurement software fully supports the Ariel. The USB connector is also how you'll charge the Ariel's built-in rechargeable battery. The rubber plug protects the USB socket from dust. The AR-coded protective window ensures proper ingress protection for the Ariel. It's removable in case you want to replace it with the included diffuser to measure small, high power density beams while staying safely below the damage threshold. Or if you need to measure beams in spectral regions, mid and far IR, that require the window to be removed. We'll first have a quick walk around to get to know the Ariel's layout, and then we'll dive in and see how to actually operate it. We'll start our walk around with the display. The most important part of the display is, of course, the power readout. That's where we're shown the measurement results. The Ariel shows us more than just the bottom line power, though. Part of the trick behind the Ariel's ability to measure so quickly is that it treats the short exposure to the high power as if it were a pulse, and it measures the pulses energy. Energy per time equals power. The exposure time is automatically measured by a built-in fast photodiode, and the Ariel does the calculation and displays the power. To give the user maximum information, the Ariel displays not only the power but also the physically measured energy and the measured exposure time. We can set all the Ariel's working parameters using just a few simple controls. If we're operating it standalone, we have these three buttons on off as well as main menu, toggle through the menu items, select a menu item. If we're operating the Ariel through either Bluetooth or USB, then of course we'll do everything through the software. Status indicators show the user the main highlights of current settings and other important information, a sort of heads up display. These include internal temperature, when it reaches 60 degrees Celsius, the Ariel will show a too hot alert with blinking backlight to indicate that it now needs to be allowed to cool down. Bluetooth status. Whether the window is in or the diffuser or we've set one of the other wavelength settings. Battery status. We're also shown here what mode we're in. The Ariel can work in short exposure mode and it can also work in the more conventional continuous mode for powers all the way down to 200 milliwatts and up to 500 watts. In many ways, the Ariel combines multiple instruments into one. What range or scale we're on. In short exposure mode, note that the scale is in units of energy, since that's what the Ariel is physically measuring. In continuous or CW mode, the scale will be in units of power. Now that we've done our walk around, let's get to work. Remember the Ariel can be used standalone or via Bluetooth or via USB. We'll start with standalone. After powering up the fully charged Ariel, we'll set the mode using the right hand button. The more typical usage scenario will likely involve higher powers for which we'll use short exposure mode. We'll then see the short exposure icon. It looks like a pulse displayed here above the button. We could alternatively select continuous mode and see the CW icon. For lower powers, the Ariel can manage to dissipate the heat. 
From 200 milliwatts up to 30 watts, it can do so continuously. From 30 watts up to 500 watts, it can do so intermittently, up to 20 seconds at a time for 500 watts. We now set the range by pressing the middle button and toggling until the most appropriate range. Note that since we're in short exposure mode, the range is shown in units of energy. We want to select the lowest range that's still higher than the expected pulse energy. Additional settings are done through the menu. We press the left hand button to open the menu. The middle button, which outside the menu served as the range button, toggles through the menu to the desired item. And the right button selects it. The left button will close the current menu and return up one level. Note that while the menu is open, the measurements are stopped. In the menu, we select Wavelength, and then we have five options. Window. This includes the range 500 to 1100 nanometers, with the anti-reflective coated window properly screwed in to ensure ingress protection. Then there are two separate wavelength settings for when the diffuser is in, instead of the window, for when we're measuring tight, high power density beams. The specifications give the minimum beam diameters for each to help you know when to switch from the window to the diffuser. The diffuser spectral range is divided into two separate wavelength settings, VIS-D, visible 440 to 550 nanometers, with diffuser, that's the D, and NIRD, near IR 940 to 1100 nanometers, with diffuser. These are separate settings since the optical characteristics of the window and diffuser are different and the spectral behavior of the diffuser is not flat so the REL needs to know which conditions are in use in order to automatically apply the appropriate internally stored calibration factor. The REL is also calibrated for 2.94 micrometers and 10.6 micrometers. These wavelengths are outside the spectral range of the window and the diffuser though, so the top cover needs to be left open in these cases. Note that at 2.94 micrometers and 10.6 micrometers, the photodiode will not be able to measure the pulse width, and also the device will not be protected against dust or water while there's no window or diffuser mounted in place. Additional menu items are as follows. Logging. The area logs measurements automatically. In CW power mode, it logs once each second, and in short exposure mode, it logs every pulse. The Ariel's internal memory can store a great deal of data, 32,768 readings. It's designed, after all, to be fully usable standalone. When the log reaches maximum, the oldest measurements will be overwritten. The logging submenu items let you check the memory status and clear the entire log. Under Settings, we have a range of settings available. Backlight toggles the backlight on and off. Contrast shows the contrast adjustment screen. Time date shows the time date adjustment screen. Bluetooth, this submenu allows several actions. Disconnect, available only if there's a device connected to the Ariel via Bluetooth. Disable or enable the Bluetooth connection. Clear all, clears the Bluetooth cache. Use this option only if you encounter pairing difficulties. After using this option, you'll need to clear pairing on every paired device. Temperature units toggles the units used to display temperature on the screen between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Information displays an information screen with data such as serial number, firmware version, next calibration date, and more. Zero opens the zeroing screen. Use the zeroing option to maximize the measurement accuracy in CW mode. The zeroing process should be performed while the sensor is protected from light and when the sensor is cool. The protective cover can be left on for this purpose. Zeroing is recommended once a day or before each CW measurement session. It's not required for short exposure mode measurements. Now that we've set the needed parameters, we can take a measurement. The laser is fired for short exposure, and the readout is displayed almost immediately. And as we said, it's also logged automatically. We can perform a number of measurements in succession too. 
because of the Ariel's short exposure mode of operation, it doesn't absorb the level of heat that it would under continuous exposure to such powers. Still, even short bursts of heat add up. Its maximum operating temperature of 60 degrees Celsius will be reached after a cumulative exposure to 14 kilojoules. For example, 0.7 seconds exposure to 2 kilowatts means 1.4 kilojoules per exposure. 10 such exposures would bring us to 14 kilojoules. When the maximum temperature is eventually reached, the flashing too hot warning is shown. And it's time to give the Ariel a short pause to cool down. Cooling down time before another 14 kilojoule series of shots is approximately 10 minutes. And that can be reduced somewhat by using a heat sink screwed to the bottom. We did say we'd come back to that heat sink. To use the Ariel via Bluetooth, the Ariel needs to have Bluetooth enabled in the menu as we saw. It's enabled by default. Then we need to make sure we're paired with our Android device and that we have the Ophir Star Viewer app installed. It can be downloaded from the Google Play Store or from the Ophir website on the Ariel page under the Software tab. In a separate video, we'll show how to use the Star Viewer app to operate the Ariel. Similarly, to use the Ariel via USB connection to a PC, use the included USB-C cable. The Ophir StarLab PC software application turns your PC or laptop into a full-fledged multi-channel laser power energy workstation. It can be downloaded from the Ophir website on the Ariel page under the software tab. A series of videos on our website walk you through the use of StarLab. To see how we can help you with your application, contact Ophir directly via your local Ophir representative or visit our website.